Hey, what's up guys? It's Cliff from Trail Grid Pro. Super pumped to be with you here today. We're going to be throwing in a Sony 9500 ES in this 2020 Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro. The 9500 ES from Sony is packed with all sorts of goodies. For starters, it has a 10.1 inch HD capacitive touchscreen. It's like having a huge iPad in your vehicle that actually controls all the functions of your 4Runner's audio system. It also is packed with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No longer will you have to connect to your USB to launch Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. However, our bundle will still maintain your factory USB for charging capabilities, which is a huge benefit of our bundle. The 9500 brings all sorts of vehicle information to life on your head unit as never seen before in your Toyota 4Runner. At the touch of a button, you'll be able to access all sorts of cool gauge information, such as miles per hour, RPM, and your vehicle load. All right, guys, we're gonna get started with the disassembly and then the install of the Sony 9500 ES. And the purpose of this video is to show you just how easy this is to do on your own, in your own garage with basic hand tools. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with disassembly. So we're gonna start with the side panel. So just grab it with both hands and we're gonna pull straight out. And you can just set that on the ground. And then the other side, again, same thing. Both hands wrapped around it, pull straight out. Next, we're moving to the HVAC column. And actually this again, just pulls straight out, just like that. Underneath, there's one connector right here, which we just need to pull out. And we can put the HVAC column aside. Next, we have four 10 millimeter bolts underneath the radio. There's two on each side. Now, when you pull these bolts out, make sure to put them in your front cup holder because we're gonna need those for the reassembly of the Sony 9500ES. Okay, so now we're ready to remove the head unit, but before you do that, go ahead and throw a microfiber on your shift knob because when we pull the head unit out while we're removing all the connectors, you can actually rest the head unit on your shift knob. It makes it a little bit easier. So what we're gonna do, the easiest way to remove this is to top and bottom of the head unit, just have pressure pulling out towards you and do one side at a time. Okay, so we've got one side out and now move to the other and same thing, pull straight out. Okay, so at this point, everything is removed. So push yourself up to the front of your seat and pull this out gently, okay? And let it sit, there we go, on the shift knob. All right, so now that we have the head unit out, we're literally just gonna be removing all of the connectors in the back of the head unit. So you can just do that one at a time. Some of the connectors are, are a little tricky to get out, so it helps to have a small flathead screwdriver so that you can depress the tab. All right, all of our connectors are out. We're ready to transfer the vents and trim pieces from the factory head unit to your new dash kit from your Sony 9500ES. All right, we have the factory head unit over here on the bench and we're gonna remove a couple things. We're gonna need this top trim piece. We're gonna need to remove the vents and the hazard button. So let's get started with that. All right, so we're gonna start by removing this top trim piece. There's two Phillips head screws, one on this side and one on this side. So let's start removing those. Got that one removed and this trim piece just pulls right out. So we can put that to the side. All right, so now we're gonna remove the two vents and the easiest way to do that is with a long flathead screwdriver because there are tabs all around each vent that we need to move in order to pull the vents out. All right, so real quick, now that we have one of the vents removed, I wanna show you where these tabs are so that you can look for them while you're pulling yours out. So there's seven of them. So there's one here, and again, we're pushing them to the side while you're pulling up with gentle pressure on the vent to try to remove it. Here's the second one, here's the third one, four, five, six, and seven. So again, I'm moving the tabs, pulling up with gentle pressure, trying to get it to start disconnecting, which I can start to feel. Again, moving them one at a time, trying to get that gentle pressure. Well, there we go, I can start to feel it come out. All right, let's start over here. There we go. 
Ah, now we're starting to come out. There we go. And again, not pulling hard, just gentle pressure. All right, last thing we need to do is remove the hazard switch from the factory head unit. So all you're gonna do is push from the back. So let's go ahead and remove that. There we go, pops right out. Okay, so at this point, now that we've removed all the pieces from the factory head unit that we need, it's nice to do a little part check to make sure you have everything that you'll need to transfer to the new dash kit, which will come with your Sony 9500 ES kit. So we've got both vents, we've got a hazard trim piece, and this is gonna come in your kit from us. We've got the vent switches here, which come in our kit as well. You will no longer have to remove those from the factory kit. We've got your hazard button here. We've got the dash kit clips here and extra screws, and then the trim piece from the top right here. So that's everything that we'll need to transfer to the new dash kit. And right now we're gonna show you how to do that. All right, so we have the top trim piece from the factory head unit, which we're just going to push into position on the new dash kit. All right, and we're gonna use our screws that we took out from the factory head unit to put back into place here. All right, got that in place. Then we're gonna flip the dash kit over and we're gonna put into position our vent controller trim pieces. So let's put in this side here. And again, these just will fit into position and kind of slide right in just like that. And now the other side, same thing, just push it right into position. Perfect. Now we need to flip the dash kit over and we're going to use our screws from our kit to lock those into position. Okay. The screws from our kit that are going to be used to secure both sides are the small screws with a, they have like a flat top. Okay. So that's what we're gonna be using to make the connections here. So let's get started, two on each side. All right, so as you get in the first one on each side, you will have to hold pressure on the trim piece from the other side to make sure it doesn't fall out of position. Second one, and same thing, holding pressure on the front. General reminder that we are dealing with plastic pieces, so we don't have to really hammer down any of the screws. All right, so now it's time to put our vents in the new dash kit. And actually the vents have left hand, right hand notifications on them so you know which is which. So let's get started with the right side. And these will just snap into position. And the second, again, will just snap into position. Okay, there we go both vents in. So now we're gonna put in the yellow clips from our kit and they just go right over the mounting points here on each side, there's four of them. And one right back here. Okay, just a couple more things. We're gonna put in our hazard trim piece and again, that this piece is gonna come in your kit. And lastly, the hazard switch from your factory head unit and that's just gonna slide right into position. Give it a little push test, it still moves, and we're good to go. Everything is here, ready to go in the Toyota 4Runner. All right guys, it's go time. It's time to put in the Sony 9500 ES in your Toyota 4Runner. Now you may have noticed with this bundle, of course, the screen, the huge 10.1 inch HD touchscreen is gonna come detached from the body of the bundle. That's by design. We're gonna put in the body of the bundle first, then we're gonna put over the dash kit, and then we're gonna put the screen on top. So for starters, let's pull out the microfiber and put it back over our shift knob because we're gonna rest our new bundle on that while we're making our connections. So let's get started with that. Okay, so we're gonna get started with our main vehicle connectors. And for this, this is a 2020. And the 2020 plus plugs look like this. They're these three plugs right here. If you have a 14 to 19 or a 10 to 13, they may look a little bit different, but the bottom line is, is that you are looking for connectors on the Toyota side of the vehicle that matches these plugs. It's really that simple. So let's get started. Okay, for here, we're matching black to black. That plugs right into position. And next, 
find the mate for this one, which, there we go. And lastly, there we go. So for those three in this 2020 Toyota 4Runner, those are the main connectors. And again, in yours, if you have a 14 to 19 or 10 to 13, uh, I believe this one is white. Um, but again, you're just looking for your mate. The next item I have here from our kit is our factory USB retention cable. Now, while this is a wireless CarPlay and wireless Android Auto capable system, we do maintain your factory USB location for charging and we can find its mate right here. It's this gray plug. And there we go. The next connector we're gonna plug in is the GPS connector, and that's this gray port that's plugged in here into the back of the Sony head unit and has a green connector. And we are looking actually for a connector that is, here it is, this white connector right here. Now, something to pay attention to here. There are two connectors that look exactly the same. One is white, one is black. Your GPS is the white connector. Your factory Sirius XM is the black connector. Let's plug in the white connector to the GPS. And at the same time, now that we have this sitting right here, this bundle for this vehicle is retaining Sirius XM. So coming out of the Sirius XM box is very same looking connector, obviously, but it's coming out of the Sirius XM module. So let's go ahead and plug that in right now as well. All right, the next connector that we're gonna plug in is the antenna, which is right here from our bundle. All right, and its mate is right here. Okay, so we're gonna plug that in. All right, so now we're gonna put in the mic, which we've already ran. And I'm gonna put a card in the upper right-hand corner of the video right now, which will link to the video, which shows you exactly how to run our microphone to the factory mic location in your Toyota 4Runner. So you can use that for the assembly of the Sony microphone. Okay, so we have all of our connections made. So now it's time to put the body into position so that we can run a test. So let's go ahead and take care of that. All right, so what you're gonna do is just tuck the wires back as much as possible so that your bot, the body of your bundle can cleanly be placed into position. Pretty good position there. So now we're gonna use a couple of our 10 millimeter bolts just to secure it so that we can put our screen on and run a test. All right, so now we've got the beautiful Sony 9500 ES screen right here, which for our test, we're just gonna put right into position here. All right, now that we have the screen completely into position, push it all the way back. We can fire up accessory power. Make sure that our system starts up. Boom, there it is, beautiful. Starts right up. Awesome, so we got that there. All right, everything is loaded there. Let's make sure steering wheel controls work. So I've got volume working, perfect. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio. So we've got radio there, which means we have sound. Everything is looking good, all right. So good first test, let's go ahead and continue with the installation. All right, now that we've run through our test and everything was perfect, let's go ahead and finish with our 10 millimeter bolts. So we've got two more here in the cup holder. We'll do one at a time. Okay, the body is secure. And now what we wanna do before we put the dash cover on is leave the hazard switch here accessible on the top, which I've got right here because we're gonna be plugging that in to the dash kit as we put it into position. All right, just slide yourself up on the seat here. Let's plug this hazard switch in. All right, got that in. And now we're just gonna put our dash cover Okay, now that we've got everything into position, that's starting to look really great. Let's go ahead and grab our screen and get it in place. All right, we've got the screen into place and now we're gonna use the screws that came with the Sony bundle 
to secure the screen to the body. And there's five screws. There's four that are identical. They're a little shorter, a little stubbier. And then there's one longer, thinner screw. The longer, thinner screw goes in the middle hole location. So let's go ahead and get those into position. Again, here a longer Phillips head that is magnetic is a must. And now for the middle screw, there's a, the black trim cover actually slides forward a bit and then the screw will go right into position. Okay. All right, we've got everything into position there. Let's go ahead and continue with our installation with our HVAC assembly. And this just has one connector. And this pops back into position. And our side panels. And our last side panel. Okay, she is in position and man is she a beauty. Let's go ahead and get this thing on and let's run through all the features. All right, Mobile ES starts up there looking beautiful. That's awesome. We come here to, we've got the, obviously the safety precautions here and I've already had it on radio, remember in our test, so our radio popped right on. So let's just go ahead and turn that down so it's not a distraction. As you can see there, our steering wheel controls work. Perfect, we got those all calibrated. So tons of cool features on here that we can go through. I love the analog clock there. Of course, we'll have to set our date and time. So why don't we go ahead and do that? I'll show you how to take care of that. So let's go to settings and we can go to system and then date and time. And so today's date is October, oops, sorry, it's November, holy cow, November 2nd, 2022. So we're good there. All right, the time, is 12.08 p.m. So let's put that down to 12.08 p.m. There we go. All right, we got our date format in, that's exactly what I want it, in time format, 12 hour, perfect. Another thing that you might wanna be uh, pay attention to is when you get your Sony 95ES bundle, the demo mode might be on, so you just wanna go ahead and turn that off, okay? So all sorts of cool, functionality in here that you can go through and find your desired settings for your vehicle. So let's go ahead and run out here to sound. One of the awesome capabilities of this is the 14 band EQ. So I've got a custom setting put on here, which I've loaded in here, but you've got all sorts of options here. Some of the preloaded options, rock, pop, dance, and this really lets you dial into the sound that you like to listen to, depending on maybe the type of music you listen to, or just frankly how loud or how bass heavy uh, that you like to uh, listen to your music. All right, so we've got all that. So let's go back to the main screen. So just a couple cool things here. So as you can see here, we've got radio, Sirius XM, Bluetooth. You can put a USB in here. And actually, if you have a movie loaded on a USB, you can plug it into your factory USB location and play movies on the Sony 9500, obviously phone. Now, one of the coolest features about the 9500 is that you can have three cameras connected to this head unit. You, got, you can hook up three different cameras here. Obviously, we have our factory rear camera, which is retained. Camera one, let's say you wanna add a front camera, you can add a front camera to the vehicle, get it at any time, and then another camera that you can add to view at any time just by pushing these. We've got gauges. Now I'm gonna start up the vehicle so that we can see these, so let's do that. So here's the gauge screen right here. We've got RPMs running, we've got our intake temperature, our fuel level, we've got our load here. Obviously your miles per hour is zero, but if I put on the gas, you see the load jump there? I mean, it's just real time which is super cool. And then just some other things here, uh, braking, miles per hour again, zero to 60, quarter mile, all sorts of cool stuff. And if we go back to the settings here, let's get the vehicle info. And right now our PSI is, oh, there it goes, it's starting to load up. So when you start your, uh, when you start your vehicle the first time, don't be alarmed if it's still loading your PSI. So you can see here, mine only one side right now is loaded. It may take five minutes or so to load that up 
but it's already starting to come in. You can see the doors that are open in the vehicle. Our engine's okay. Uh, and obviously our battery voltage as well. All right, so now let's get to the start of the show and show you how easy it is to hook up your wireless CarPlay and the same will ring true for wireless Android Auto. So we wanna add a device. So now it's telling us to look for 9500 ES in our Bluetooth options. Oh, there it is right there. So let's press that. Cool, telling us, hey, there's the pass key. Yep, it matches. So let's pair them. And this is saying, hey, allow your contacts and favorites to sync. Yep, let's allow that. Boom. Look at that. Yep, we want CarPlay. There you go. You got CarPlay. We've got the volume turned down just because for a variety of reasons so that you can hear me. But there is CarPlay right there at your fingertips in HD in your Toyota 4Runner looking amazing. So we've got our phone, music, messages, huge Caps fan. So there you go. There's the Caps NHL app. We've got our now playing calendar, all sorts of awesome Apple CarPlay compatible apps will show on your 9500 ES in your Toyota 4Runner. It's that easy to launch. Now, every time that you get in your vehicle, it will connect automatically to CarPlay or Android Auto. Nothing you have to do to connect. And as a reminder, the factory USB location under your head unit can still be used for charging. Okay, so you can expect this complete install to take you about an hour and a half from start to finish. Just follow this video. This is applicable to any 2010 all the way up to 2023 Toyota 4Runner. This bundle comes in a silver dash or a charcoal dash, as you see here. Again, we also have it available in silver. I've gotten a lot of questions about the screen positioning of this bundle. And actually there are a lot of different positions that you can put the screen in when you receive your bundle. This is just the position that I've found that I like the best. And this is how you will receive the bundle, but you can manipulate it in all sorts of different ways to find your desired location for your 9500 screen to be in your Toyota 4Runner. It's completely customizable. The second question that I've gotten a lot is, hey, does it block the vents? And the way I have the screen positioned, I lose zero airflow with this. I have my vents pointed slightly up and all of the airflow comes into the vehicle. Some of it still hits me in the face. It in no way disrupts any of the airflow, nor is it doing anything to the back of the Sony 9500 screen by having cool air or the hot air from the vehicle hitting the back of the Sony 9500 ES. I've been testing this in my personal vehicle for seven months now, and I'm obsessed with it. There's no chance that I would ever take this head unit out of my 4Runner. I love it. The big screen is like I said in the beginning, it's like having an iPad in your screen. Now, those of you who like ergonomics, I find the positioning of this head unit to be way more ergonomic than the factory location. All I have to do is raise my hand up and everything's at my fingertips, which I love. The third question I get a lot is, is the audio in my Toyota 4Runner going to improve with the Sony 9500 ES? Well, first of all, the answer is yes. And actually with any of our Sony bundles, the audio in your 4Runner, Tacoma or Tundra is going to improve. And that's for a couple easy reasons. One, our Sony bundles have more power than the factory head unit. And the second reason is that Sony has really dialed in the sound signal that they send out of their receivers to the speakers so you can expect a louder and more clear audio experience in your 4Runner. All right, guys, well, that wraps this up. Thanks so much for watching. This 9500 ES bundle is available now in the Trail Grid Pro Shop, both in a charcoal dash, as we have in this video, and a silver dash, and it's ready for 2010 all the way up to 2023 Toyota 4Runners, the entire fifth gen range is available to be purchased, again, in the Trail Grid Pro Shop. If you have any questions, leave it below or hit us up at www.trailgridpro.com. And as always, guys, have a blast out there.